Good morning. It's so nice to be here with you. Um, before we leave the introduction part of the service, I want to, I'm sure it's in your bulletin, and I want to just accent that I'll be teaching a, a visioning. It's called With Vision to Action class on Thursday nights from 6.30 to 8.30. And so I invite you to sign up today and to come and see how to put the vision that you have for your life and the world into action. So that's the only announcement I have. I don't often get given my talk titles. And, um, and it's, I have discovered that when I am given my talk titles, it usually sets me free in a new kind of way because I'm not deciding what I think I should or we should be attending to today. Somebody else is setting that. So I'm really thrilled with this title, Inner Speech, because it stretches me to look at it in a new kind of way. Because as we know here in Science of Mind, what, you know, change your thinking, change your life has been our slogan for a long time. And so how do we look at that fresh today? And that's what I hope to bring to you. The principle that I'm working with today is that thought is creative. Now science, has proved that in so many ways. And there's a fabulous little book, which I'm gonna to talk to Sylvia about, called E Squared. And it's got nine scientific experiments that prove spirituality. So it's an exciting book, and I, I may get to read a little bit from it a little bit later on. And the practice that I'm using today is to Give yourself to this divine presence. Let yourself be free to get into the flow. Court the divine. Let yourself be available to it. Study it, play with it. There's lots of ways that we can expose ourselves to God and let ourselves be exposed so that we might learn that which is ours to know now which is really what this talk is about today. Um, I subtitled it for myself, Learning to Swim in the Deep End of the Pool. <laughs> Anybody ever discover yourself learning to swim in the deep end of the pool besides me? Oh yeah, <laughs> right, it's a very human experience and if you're paying attention, it is a great one. Sometimes, you know, we only get the perspective of how great it is after years later sometimes. Oh, that's why that happened. Oh, this really is for my good. Oh, okay. I mean, I've had several experiences like that. I mean, probably the most dramatic one was uh, when I um, woke up one morning to turn the alarm off and slipped a disc in my back. And I'd been painting houses for years and lifting big heavy paint cans and setting up scaffolding. And I know you can't imagine me doing things like that, but, but I really did. And one day after three weeks of really intense work, all it took was just waking up and t reaching the wrong way. And that experience did not feel like for my good at the time. It did not feel like this gift from God. It really felt like hell. And I was sure that it was. My inner thought, my inner speech at the time was, this isn't fair. My God, I'm a single mom. How do you think I'm going to take care of everything? Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. You know that kind of inner response to things that happen? So I went there, and um, I spent a lot of time in that, probably nine or ten months. I couldn't get out of bed much except to go to the doctor. And um, I really suffered. I was angry. In fact, people would come to help me. I lived, thank heavens, in a little communal um, farm that uh, several of us single parents set up to support each other. And so my kids were taken care of and fed and they had their jobs and I could just lie around being miserable and suffering. And when people would come to visit, they would bring me something and I'd see them and I'd get so angry that I'd pick up whatever I had on the bed near me and throw it at them, which of course would make my back hurt more. And then I would get tense and my back would hurt even more. Have you ever done that? Responded to life with that kind of a reaction where it's just not fair. 
Well, so that difficult experience, I didn't even put it in my notes, but that difficult experience is what set me free. And the reading today was talking about that there is something in us, this yearning to be free. And unbeknownst to me, this little medical situation was God's love for me that I might discover freedom. So when, you know, I think it was Robert Schuller wrote, wrote a book called um, When Bad Things Happen to Good People. So when difficult things happen in our lives, what we learn here in this teaching is wait, pause, don't react. There's something good here for you. Everything that's happening in our lives is designed to help us wake up or evolve or expand our capacity to love. So the context of this teaching and this life as I see it is that we do not need to ask to have what we desire. Our desiring it is God's asking us to show up for it. That's what I believe is the real foundation of my understanding of my relationship to the divine presence. And so when we learn that we live inside this God, which is love itself, or this life, which is pure love, then what we see when stuff comes at us can be perceived differently. We can see it as the ruthless form of God or the scary form of God, the, the, the tough love form of God. Because if everything is for our good, then everything that's happening is for our good. And if there's only one thing going on, that means God is in the darn alarm clock, and God is in the anger, and God was in everything, guiding me to myself again. Do you, are you with me? Yeah. So, it's so important for me, it's been so important for me to come to see life differently than the way I was raised and the way that the collection of most humanity still sees it as a punishment. Stuff happens because I was a bad girl and my parents always told me that. And in fact, I told my kids that sometimes until I started to wake up. And now I know that stuff just happens. And when this stuff happens, it can put you into the deep end of the pool. And if you don't know that this pool is here to learn to trust life so you can float, if you don't know that, if you don't know that every bit of that deep end and all the part between your feet and the ground that don't touch, all of it is here for your great <coughs> expansion, then it's very easy to think that you're sinking, right? To think it's the end, to, th to flail around, to, it's not fair, how do I fix it? There's not time, I've only got 20 minutes, the mic isn't working, oh my God, what am I gonna do? But in fact, when you know that everything serves you, we learn here, here in this room, in these classes, we learn, <sighs> to relax and to accept what's going on knowing that it's for our good. So this topic, inner speech. So what is inner speech? It's a habit. It's a pattern of thinking. It's, a, it's many things. It's the power of creation. It's the, the everyday ordinary little thoughts you have you don't even know you're having. This inner speech is your own dialogue with yourself. It's sometimes horrible to find ourselves flailing around in the deep end of the pool, realizing that we knew better, realizing that we've studied this stuff. There is no reason to be afraid. It's just life happening. And, and sometimes it's embarrassing. This inner speech is a choice. What we are telling ourselves is something we've decided to tell ourselves. 
It's not an accident. Inner speech is a rehearsed presentation, a practiced presentation. It's a story we tell ourselves. And if we're really lucky, it's a story we get to tell lots of other people too. <laughs> and they get to share their story with us. And there we go, swimming in the deep end in our stories. The dictionary, I looked it up last night, what the dictionary says. The dictionary has many dis, uh, definitions for speech. The ability to express thoughts and emotions with sounds and gestures. So that made me think of my little two-year-old granddaughter who expresses her upset like this. <clears throat> It's so fabulous, I've been watching. When she's not happy, when she's not getting what she wants, when she just feels frustrated, she goes, Ugh. and if she's really frustrated, she makes a bigger sound. It's like, Ugh, and then she marches around a little bit. I found myself doing that with my other set of grandkids last weekend. There was something that I didn't like. I didn't want to speak it into the world. And so, I, and my granddaughter was kidding me about it later. I didn't realize I even did it. She said to her mom, and do you know what Bubba did when she kind of got frustrated? I went, oh no, I'm going to be told on. <laughs> she said, this makes me feel, <clears throat> and I went, wow, what an interesting coping strategy that is. <laughs> because I didn't really want to put words to what I was feeling. But I did want to catch that I was feeling them because setting yourself free comes from noticing where you are and what you're feeling. The difficulty is if we don't do that, we get into this habit of feeling. Now, I'm not a, bio, you know, a chemist kind of person, but what I understand is our body is filled with these little receptors and they're kind of coded for emotions. So if you're having a pattern of thought, usually means you have a pattern of emotions to go with it. I do. And then your little receptors get attuned to that pattern, and then they get plump and open for that pattern. And then all the other ones that are coded for joy or patience or anything else kind of start to shrivel up a little bit. Now, I don't understand how that happens chemically, but they assure me that it does. And so, it's important for me and for us to know what is our inner speech? What is going on up there? <sighs> inner speech is a choice, conscious or unconscious. Do you notice how oh, it just feels better without that noise? You know, I know it's good. We, none of us want to be hot. But, you know, this inner speech is kind of like that. It's just this busy thing that's going all the time, and you're caught in the orb of this pattern of thinking. Castaneda, Carlos Castaneda, who wrote all those books some 40 years ago, called it inner dialogue. And it was the very first thing that he had his students break was their inner dialogue, because he knew that that is where the whole thing started unfolding from. And he did funny things to get people to break their inner dialogue. Jog in place until you're exhausted. Well, you know, when you're jogging in place, getting exhausted, you can't think. It's a good thing. So gardening does that. Being in nature does that. What is it that has you suspend your pattern of thought? Well, first, the, like any good thing to do, we begin by being aware of where am I in this process of inner speech? is it's a recurring thought, the speech. Otherwise, it would just be an inner thought that came to pass. But it isn't. It's a speech. It's one I know well. I can tell you at any time of the day or night. And you know, there are people that we pay to listen to our inner speeches. <laughs> we pay, you know, psychologists and therapists. We could even pay practitioners and ministers, but they're not very good at listening to those inner speeches. <laughs> they, we're really good at stopping it at about five minutes and saying things like, okay, I got it. I got it. Now, is that working for you or do you want a different experience? 
And so if you, if you, that's really, it's worth it to pay a minister or practitioner because then you're not going to just listen to the story that you've been telling forever. You know it for heaven's sakes. You'll find, it, you'll find something new to consider, to stretch yourself with because that's our job. But if you're not ready to really look at it, go get your hair cut and tell your hairdresser. Or, or stand in a grocery line and tell that person because they've got a story too. And they'll listen to you and your neighbor and your long-suffering friends, they'll all listen too. Because they're so kind, they're not going to tell you how silly your story is. I mean, your speech. They're not going to say, honey, your speech is getting old. I've heard it. I could say it myself. They're not going to say that because they love you. But the God that I know is so ruthless that that God says to me, oh, for goodness sakes, will you just stop it? And if you haven't discovered Bob Newhart on the, on the internet, um, you know, just, I mean, it's so hilarious. If you think you're stuck in a pattern, go to Google and, and Google Newhart, just stop it. And entertain yourself and, and um, make a little star beside that so you can call it up whenever you need a little chuckle at yourself. Because we do get ourselves wrapped up in our speeches, don't we? We want to look good. So the speech is very important. Oftentimes, we look back and realize that an experience was a deep end of the pool experience. Sometimes, if we're really lucky, lucky, the gift from God, lucky, if we're really lucky, we notice it in the moment. It's like, oh my gosh, this is so awful. How did I get here? Why is this? What is this? Oh, I can't let anybody know this. This is just too awful. Because we find ourselves flailing around when we really thought we had it handled. When we say to ourselves, oh my gosh, what are you doing? You've been working on that issue forever. You've been affirming it, praying it. Have you ever had that experience? And when you say, for 20 years I've been studying this teaching. I have been reading these books. I've been checking yes and underlining and going, yeah, I believe that. Oh, that's a great thought. I make notes during the service. Wow, that's wonderful. I listen to a CD as I'm driving. I'm going, oh, this is so great. And then find yourself in the deep end of the pool, flailing around, realizing that you didn't know how deep that pool was. And the root of that thing is swinging you around in the pool because you didn't, you had a little itsy bitsy problem. You didn't quite believe it yet. You still had a little bit of an attachment to not being good enough, or a little bit of an attachment to nobody ever supports me, or a little bit of attachment to there isn't enough time, or money, or love, or anything you might want. But remember that what we want is God's wanting it for us, through us, as us. So our job is to, when stuff comes along, go, aha, thank you. Let me find the good in this. Ooh, whew, thank you, okay. Let me just breathe for a minute till I find something good in this. Or if I'm really smart, I'll call somebody. I'll call Reverend Mary and say, oh my gosh, help me find something good in this. Or I'll take it to the sages group and say, this is a good topic, let's find the good in it. Not really totally confessing that I am flailing around looking for the good in it. But the sages is such a nice, honest place, it almost all comes out anyway. <laughs> and then we get support. And that's what happens when we let ourselves be available to this divine presence. When we are courting the divine, then you know, what we want and what we need to support us to grow shows up. So um, there are some techniques to really set ourselves free. So what do you need when you're flailing around in the pool? You need a little inner tube. Give up your inner speech for an inner tube. <laughs> Sounds pretty good to me. So here's what some of the inner tubes looked like to me last night as I was doing this. Trust the water to support me. <sighs> How many of us could really use to trust the water 
to support us more. Right. We all do. We all do. And so to heck with all this, this pretty mask of spiritual wonder, and let's be real. Community is where it's safe to wake up and face ourselves. That's its purpose, to find yourself, to get support when you forget. That's what we do. That's why we're here. Not just to get the divine idea, because getting it is not enough. Learning to live it is what we must do, and we generally can't do that all ourselves, by ourselves, because we have our little inner speeches that keep us safe. Ha. Uh, <laughs> they don't. They keep us stuck to the bottom of the pool, and you're struggling to get free of that thing. Here's a little formula that Jack Canfield wrote years ago. E plus R equals O. It's a great inner tube. E plus R equals O. Events plus response equals outcome. So the events you may not have anything to do with, and you may not have controlled it, you may not have created it. The outcome is the law. It's going to be. But what's that thing in the middle? It's the response. So if you're flailing around, you can shift your response from flailing to looking for the nearest inner tube. That could just be like <sighs> breathing and saying, OK, God, I'm ready. Show up now. I, I need a hand. Now, I have a real personal relationship with God. I talk to God like my senior partner. I go, OK, I don't know, but my partner knows everything. So come on, I'm going to dial you up. Or right, usually you're right there, so thank heavens. That's why you're a great partner. Feelings are another inner tube. Knowing how you feel when you're not happy is important because it's a signpost to something that needs to adjust in your life. Knowing how you want to feel is even more important because if you don't create a new model in your mind for what's possible, the old one is going to keep running us. So how do you want to feel? What would love look like now? What would love feel like? What would total abundance of money look like? What would it feel like? What, what amount is that? You know, I've resisted that putting a number on it because God knows best. Well, I came to find out not too long ago, like in the last 10 days, that I have been missing an opportunity to really get clear. I found myself in the deep end of the pool on two or three areas of my life. It was really challenging. But the good thing is, is I know where the life, where those inner tubes are, and I know where the side is, and I know how to get to the short end of the pool and get out. I know how to do that. And that's just the practice. I get there through study. This month's Science of Mind magazine is totally awesome. It's got Wayne Dyer on it. When I get back from Ukraine, I'm leaving in about a month. When I get back, I'm going to do some kind of study group with his PBS TV program. I bought all the CDs. I'm ready to go. It's fabulous. And, and so, but this magazine, Dr. Ken Gordon's article in this magazine is terrific. It's just, this is where we, these are all inner tubes. Uh, Francine Huss, a practitioner in Marin, has written the juiciest little book about science of mind I have ever read, brand new, hot off the press. This copy is going to Sylvia so she can see about ordering it. But this is how science of what it is, how it works in the most fun, joyful language and process. Easy to read, easy to understand, filled with exercises that you can do. Daily gratitude is the best inner tube I know. In the middle of, oh no, there isn't my mind now, almost most of the time, I could say, is trained to say, OK, what am I grateful for in this instant? I'm grateful that I know where to turn. I'm grateful that I have a feeling of peace within me, even though this is all swirling around me. Daily gratitude before your pillow hits the head. No, before your head hits the pillow. <laughs> Sometimes if you're having a hard day, it might be the reverse. <laughs> but I haven't done that since uh, 20 years or so. But before your head hits the pillow, think about what you're grateful for from this day. And before your heat, feet, where are you? Hit the floor, 
Think about what you want to be grateful for this day, and that alone can change your life. It's a great inner tube. Have conscious friends. Here's an affirmation I use. Make up your own. This one is really tough. I don't like it, but it works. It comes from the ruthless side of love. I think only what I want to experience. That one's really a big one. What else? Practitioner support. Tell yourself the truth. It's not necessary to have a pretty mask. It's much more necessary to know yourself. The Greeks knew that. They said that at Delphi. So what comes out of all this? What is the result of all of this awareness and recognition of what the tools are? This journey is not a destination. It's a way of life. What we study here is not a quick fix for tomorrow. Much, much more is possible than we ordinarily think. In, and the science is proving that. Just wait till you read some of those experiments. There is more in the empty space than there is in the forms. And that stuff in that empty space is conscious. And it is creating through us, through our inner speech. And so what are we giving it? We have a choice. We can give it something we yearn for even if you don't believe it yet. We can give it that which we feel is ours to do, but don't know how. But the wonderful thing is you have a silent partner. It's right here, right here, always, and it knows how. Our job is only to make the connection in our mind by saying, okay, God, what would you have me do now? What would you have me know? Show me the way now. This is my everyday prayer, my everyday practice. You know, because I forget, and I get scared, and I, you know, and I have a great strong persona, and I'm just like everybody else. I have my growth edges, but I have a partner relationship with God that's so solid that I don't hang out too long flailing around anymore. So I want to end with... Um, The moment I choose to shift from my speech to a new direction, a new possibility, the moment I make that shift, life shifts with me. I, I'm down, barreling down this road with a habitual old thought, and then I wake up and realize I'm stuck in a speech, and I move over there, and I affirm that I think only what I want to experience, and I want to experience the joy of, of being free, life goes, okay, great, we want to go there too. Because in fact, that's how it started. It started with life wanting to reveal itself in its normal way. Its normal way is abundant and beautiful and loving and kind and, and prosperous and joyful and collaborative and peaceful. That's its nature. And so when we choose to align with its nature and are really honestly willing to give up the old speech, then life says, oh, lovely, so lovely. So our job is just this little shift, and it could be a small shift, 2 or 3%. So whether you're experiencing life as a not fair, and life is being done to you. We all have those moments. Or whether you're directing this law of life by saying, this is what I want, I am ready, bring it on, which is a necessary part of spiritual practice, or whether you're opening and allowing this incredible life to flow through you, or whether you're not even thinking about it anymore and you're just being it to something we can all aspire to. We have a choice. And we can move from one to another. That's the power within us. And that's the power of inner speech. We can write a speech that sets ourselves free. Yes? Yes. yes. Believe it? Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. So let's just anchor that thought, that awareness, in a little itty-bitty prayer. Oh, my.
my God, there is just this amazing life, and that's all there is. It is just right here and right now, and I know that it is here for me, for everyone here, for my children, for my grandchildren, for my families, for the people I know and love, for people I know and don't love quite so much, and the people that are all over the place who have forgotten who they are and I've forgotten who they are. This juicy, wonderful thing called God is right here in it all, as it all, moving it all in some magnificent order that is way beyond my ability to comprehend. There is an orchestration for the good of humanity. And it's happening right now. And it may seem to be falling apart, but in fact, it's falling together. It may seem to be going slow, but it's doing that so it can go fast. It may seem to be too much, but it's not. It's here to draw out of us that quality that needs and we're ready to experience and develop. It seems overwhelming, but it isn't. It's the attitude of it that is being asked to change. So this amazing thing called life is moving through me this day, this instant, right now, just as Diana said, downloaded for me specifically, and I share it with you if it speaks to you. And so if it does, claim it. And remember that this thing called life is with you always. It expresses as you allow it. The natural balance of life isn't more or less of something. It isn't an equal amount of good and bad. It is that God shows up where I am. At my level, God always is. Wherever I accept, I have that much. So I claim that for me. I claim a higher, deeper experience of this thing called joy. Of life of goodness. And I claim for each of you, whatever it is that is in your heart, because God is speaking through that desire. So enough of that, I'm not enough stuff. Just stop it. And let this love move through you. I claim that for me. I claim that for us. I claim that for everyone. I claim that for this world as it's giving up war and stepping into peace. I give thanks for that, for that truth and my ability to hear it and sense it and share it, and for our ability to do something with it. I am grateful, oh, so very grateful. Ya ochen blagadamya, spasiba vam bolshoi, and so it is. So it is. With whatever is going on. It's uh, subtitled, well, the talk, talk title is Inner Speech, but my subtitle is Learning to Swim in the Deep End of the Pool. <laughs> so just so you know what's coming. So the deep end could be, oh, look at it, isn't that beautiful? So now, it's supposed to go to the Ukraine national anthem sung in English, because that's the context. And here they are singing, needs to be up. But somehow the picture is frozen. That wasn't the plan. <laughs> have you ever had things go like that in your life? You, you have a plan, you know what you're, you're ready, my gosh. Everything's in its folder and then, oop, something doesn't work. So let's turn it up and see if we can hear the words. Because the context for this talk is what's going on in Ukraine what it's doing in my life, and how it's moved a whole country into the deep end of the pool. Can you hear it? It's a very proud song. So now there's pictures that you can't see, and she says, I'm a Russian, and I'm a little bit Polish, but I'm Ukrainian. No, oh, yes, of course we're Ukrainian. Oh, Ukrainian. I'm a little Russian, some Lithuanian. They're singing in a park and people are starting to gather. It's really pretty. Dzień 
Katya. I'm Katya. I live here. Oh, but I came from Poland. Oh, but I consider myself Ukrainian. I learned in a Jewish school. But uh, now I am uh, travel all around and and it's windy and my voice is scattered. I was born in Kiev. My father is in Crimea. My uncle is in Shatomer. I am Ukrainian. Now there's a lot of people around us. And in this moment, it's really important to remember who I am. I'm free and I'm a Ukrainian. Through bright futures. They don't fr take freedom lightly there. I'm a little Russian, I'm Polish. But no matter what, I'm Ukrainian. I was born in Russia, Moscow, came here, families from Ukraine. I'm Shania. I'm Ukrainian. So you get the feel, right? There's all these people, and they're coming from all over the former Soviet Union. And they're remembering that they're Ukrainian. It doesn't matter what the news tells them. So thank you for helping me remember this this morning. Yes, indeed. And at 12 o'clock today, um, I'm going to do, and the other part of the slideshow works, we've tested it. Um, we have a wonderful slideshow of what's happening in Ukraine, what our communities doing with it. Um, you'll really enjoy it, so I hope you stay, because it touches all of us. It's not just about what's happening in another part of the world. The essence of what's going on in Ukraine or Iraq or any other place that's experiencing great conflict is it's an opportunity for us to see what's my part in this? Where am I experiencing conflict? How can I expect to want peace there if we don't have peace here? It'll turn itself off, right? The light will? Yeah, great. So welcome to this wonderful service and I'm so glad that you're here. I truly am. I'm happy to be here to share with you. I'm really thrilled that my um, fun, fun son and family are here. And it um, looks like they've gone out to play, but my grandkids are here and my daughter-in-law and her mom. And so yeah. it's so wonderful to come and support me. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really grateful for that. OK, so the talk title was given to me. It's kind of unusual that that happens. You know, I usually decide for myself what I want to say, what I want to talk about. And what I've discovered is if I'm open enough to listen to somebody else, I'm going to find something that's really valuable to me. So the talk title is Inner Speech. And my subtitle is Learning to Swim in the Deep End of the Pool. So um, I like to work with a spiritual principle whenever I'm teaching anything to myself or anyone else. And so the principle today is thought is creative. The power of thought. It's a basic science of mind teaching. We forget it all the time. <laughs> We're such creatures, so funny, funny creatures. And the practice is to expose ourselves to God, to allow ourselves to be exposed, in other words, take off the mask, take off the, the pretty persona, and just start building a relationship with a partner 
your spiritual partner that walks every moment with you, that goes through every tight little corner, every little knothole. You have, I have, we have a spiritual relationship called life that carries us forward. So the practice is expose yourself and develop a relationship to this thing called life so that it's there when you need it. Especially important to have it when you've suddenly found yourself flailing around in the deep end of the pool. Has anyone ever experienced this sudden sense that, oh my gosh, I'm in the deep end of the pool and I seem to be sinking, I'm not swimming? Anybody ever had that or is it just me? Aha, uh -huh, okay. So it's really important when you find yourself in a moment like that, first of all, to recognize it so that you know what you're going through so you can behave accordingly. Because every conscious being would want to seize that moment and realize, what is mine to do now? Do I want to sink? Probably not. If I want to float, what am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to trust I'm going to have to trust life. So let's use that metaphor that the deep end of the pool is the experience that life brings us so that we might know ourselves more. We might reveal the goodness that is in us. We might discover the joy, the love, the passion, the, the abundance that our life is. You know, it would be great if we could experience sitting quietly, reading a good cozy book. But oftentimes when we do that, we are in our nice, familiar, cozy inner speech, our inner conversation, and we don't stretch beyond that cozy comfort zone that that inner speech speaks of. So the deep end of the pool truly is one of the ways that God loves us. So this teaching says everything that happens in life happens for us. There is one life. Why can we say that? We, because there's one life, one power, one presence. That power and presence is perfect. Now, that is not just the words in a song. There's a lineage of ancient history that speaks to the perfection of this idea of oneness, of unity. And what that means is, no matter what is happening in the deep end of my pool or yours, there's really only one thing going on, and that is whatever you call this thing called life. You can call it God or spirit or Allah or Yahweh or whatever, nature. You can call it whatever. But that's the only thing that's happening when we find ourselves in a tough spot and when we find ourselves in a joyous spot too. It's all God, all one big thing called God. And wherever we are, there it is. In fact, that's, I had a breakthrough, I don't know, a few months ago, where I realized that balance isn't an equal amount of joy and suffering. <laughs> I mean, I mean haven't, haven't we often thought that balance is, you know, an equal amount of work and play? An equal amount of good and bad, it's all balanced like the yin-yang thing. Oh, there's the dark part, there's the light part, I guess it's right. <laughs> but it isn't. And we're not meant to have an equal amount of difficult and an equal amount of joy. What I believe balance is, this is just, I could be all wet. Of course, I am swimming, so I may probably am all wet. But the equal amount, as I understand it, is that wherever I am, wherever I am, doing whatever I'm doing, I am met by God. If I am swimming and flailing around, then God is there with me. If I am soaring and, and feeling so inspired, God is there with me. Wherever I am, to the exact ability of me to perceive this amazing life, there is God. Right there, no more, no less, that's the law. So, if we wonder, why is it not working, it's just not fair, to, to listen to Diana's question, that's not the question you want to be asking. <laughs> I like the second question a whole lot better. What could I do differently so that I see and feel you right here with me right now? Are you with me? Okay, so what is inner speech? 
Inner speech is this pattern of thought that rolls around in our mind like a dog with a juicy bone, ring, 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 like an old record kind of got stuck. I'm old enough to remember that, getting the groove in the record and having to move the arm, you know. And the pattern of thought is kind of like that. We have a familiar pattern. Everybody does. And then we get the habit of hanging with that pattern. Now, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah. So do you know that when you recognize your pattern, that is a moment of power, even though it feels like hell. <laughs> but it truly is. It's a moment of power because we cannot shift out of it if we don't know where the heck we are. Right? So the first thing is tell ourselves the truth. That means we have to give up looking perfect all the time and being dry. <laughs> You just get over it. If you really want to make progress, you got to get wet. It's just the way it is. And life, you know, the context that I see is that it isn't simply that God will give me what I ask for or that God will give me what I deserve. The context that I believe in is there is one power, one presence, one life. It's everywhere present. It's whole and complete, perfect at all times. It's right here, right now. And I know that because that's true, there must be an uh, inner tube somewhere in this pool. <laughs> there must be. Because otherwise, it, it wouldn't be happening because God does not bring me here to suffer. Are you ready to give up any vestiges of suffering? Yeah. Yes, all right, well, then you can today. You can. I mean, why wait? You can give it up right now. And splash somebody while you're at it. <laughs> it's fun. So why do they call it a speech, inner speech? Well, what is a speech? Just imagine for a minute some of your speeches. Think about your inner speech. Hmm. Yes. Well, most of our inner speeches are well rehearsed. We know them in and out. We know them in the morning and we know them at the night and we know them no matter who comes up and asks us anything, we're ready with our inner speech. Unless we're hanging out here more. And then we're realizing, oop, that speech doesn't work anymore. Oh, that's not who I want to be. That isn't how I want to live. I'm getting a new idea. Thank you. And that's what we're here for, to get a new idea. So I would like you to take an instant right now and think about one of the inner speeches that is keeping you in that little whirlpool in the swimming pool that's making you feel a little bit like you need to flail around. You know, oh, it doesn't work because why has this always happened to me? It's not fair. Just, you know, just bring it into your mind. It's not the truth, so don't worry. Okay, that speech that goes with that experience is something that you can change right now, in this moment. It isn't the truth of who you are. It's just simply been what you've known so far or what you've habitually done. Now, you know, this is called the science of mind. It's not called the idea of mind or the good thoughts about mind. It's called the science of mind, and it's called the science of mind for a reason, because science is what demonstrates why the law works the way it does, why life works the way it does. It's not wishy-washy. This is a fabulous book, and uh, oh good, somebody else over there is reading this book. I love this book. It's called E Squared. And it's got nine, I think, nine experiments that prove that thoughts are things and that we are connected beyond your wildest imagination. You ever think you're lonely and separate and alone? That may be your experience, but it is not your truth, even though it may seem true at the time. The truth is anything that was ever connected is connected forever. That means all of us. Do you know that all of us this is a, a strong scientific theory. I can't say for sure, but if life started with the compression of all matter into a little tiny thing the size of a pea 
heated up to millions degrees centigrade, and then it exploded, everything that was ever connected in that little pea went everywhere. That means you and I have been together since the beginning of time. Really. And we cannot fall out of that. We can't not be connected. What does that mean? That means that whatever's going on in your mind is connected to what's going on in your mind because there's really only one mind and we're just using it. We're just tapping into what it says. So this connection factor says something like this. And these are the kind of scientific experiments you'll read about here. There's something like uh, 400 million bits of inf 400 billion bits of information that come to you every second. Every second, 400 billion bits. That would take 200 books, big fat books, to measure those things. No, 600,000 big fat books. And when all is said and done, only 2,000 measly little bits of information are perceived by your brain in one second. Can you imagine that? And then when that's happening, the brain is busy sorting them out, putting them where they go. How do you think that works? The most familiar ones are the ones you catch. The ones that you're used to are the ones you say, oh, thank heavens. Those other ones that say, get out of the pool. You go, oh, no, I don't know about that. You know, I'm swimming. That's what I do. Change your mind. No, no, no. I've got the right idea. My mother had it and her mother before her, and I'm going to have it too. You know, but while we do that, we keep ourselves unfree. We have a country in Ukraine, and I hope you stay at 12 o'clock because the presentation is so cool. We have a country that's discovering they are at this moment of power. And you know what that looks like? This, this symbol, you know this symbol? This, this is what's happening. The power and the presence of spirit is descending through the consciousness of these people, supported by everybody else who believes in freedom, who believes in the right to self-governance, that believes that we can be responsible. This is the power of spirit, and this is what we do with it. This is how it becomes manifest in our life. This is our life. This is the gift that is given constantly and constantly in every second, in every wave, in every bite of information. And this is how we use it. So we do not need to suffer any longer. We do not need to stay stuck in an old pattern of speech. You can change your mind. Yes. All right, wonderful. So... Um, what happens when you're in the deep end of the pool? What's the first thing after you've realized you're flailing? What's the first thing you need to remember? Yeah, you can trust this water. You will float. If you just let go of this, I can't do it. I don't know what. I don't know how. It's too late. I'm too old. I'm too thin. I'm too fat. I'm too poor. I'm too lonely. And blah. If you can let go of that story, that speech of yours, I got one. We all have them. If we could let go of that and say, ask a better question, remind me how to float. Would you show me the way to proceed? I know I believe that life is abundant and so am I. Could you help show me how to feel that abundance today so that I begin realizing it in my life instead of feeling scared that I don't have it? Could you show me, move through me now and let me feel what love feels like? Be here now. I am listening. I am ready. I am learning. It's never too late. Never too late. And you give yourself to spirit. You court the divine. You make yourself available. And spirit will never, ever say, nah, I'm busy. <laughs> spirit will never say, I've been waiting for 48 years and you haven't asked me, so... Those are the kinds of things we do to each other. We withhold, right? To make a point and be right and all that stuff. But in fact, that's not right at all. We must be available to love and the goodness and the power that moves through us. That's our job. <sighs> yeah, thank you. 
So here's some little tools. When we're swimming out there, learning to swim, in the deep end, it's natural to look for the inner tubes. And give up this inner speech. Know that you'll think a good thought when you need it. Just look for an inner tube. Here's a few that you can rely on. One, okay, I'm gonna trust you. You know, have you ever heard the story, the guy falls off the cliff, he grabs a branch, he's going down, he's holding on, and he says, help, help, is there somebody up there? And this big voice says, let go of the branch. Is there anybody else? <laughs> our job is to trust this thing called spirit through our intuition. We know. And let go of all of this and float, for goodness sakes. Because we all can. If we don't resist the water, we all will float. And that is just a metaphor for we are supported by this thing called life. E plus R equals O. It's a little formula that Jack Canfield came up years ago, and it means event plus response equals outcome. What is the event in your life that you are reacting to like this? Who is the person who's acting in a way you don't like and it pains you so much you're spending all your time crying? I had one of those last week. It took me three or four days to really just get calm. And I could cry at a hat's notice right now, just like that, because it's big in my life. But in fact, I know that my R, my response to that event is more important than anything else. And I choose to respond to know that that event and all events in all of our lives are God showing up for my good and the good of all people involved. All of this that's happening in Ukraine, and you will see at 12 o'clock, People in our community know that it is our job to find peace within ourselves. We take no enemies, we stay in love and peace, and we blame no one, and we find where is the aggression in our heart, and we're learning to let it go. It is the biggest work any of us have ever done, and you're invited into it. The way to float is to trust. <sighs> Still breathing? <sighs> Okay, keep breathing. There's tons of little um, inner tubes here. Uh, study, take a class. This month's Science of Mind magazine is astounding, astounding. Dr. Ken Gordon, our beloved leader, says this. It's just really powerful. The simple but harsh reality, that sounds like the deep end of the pool, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> So my deep end sounds like, you know, I know that God loves me even when being ruthless. I know that when things aren't going right, it is the love of God guiding me to myself. Thank heavens I know that. Okay, Dr. Ken, the simple but harsh reality is that you cannot have a better life tomorrow unless you're prepared to first experience and recognize it now. Isn't that awesome? Very simple. You cannot have something tomorrow that you're not willing and able to recognize and experience now. So what is our job when we're flailing around? Remove the doubt and find that inner tube that says, there is one life, that life is God's life, that life is perfect and that life my life now. Find a friend to talk to, make a gratitude list Ask God in the middle of the apparent drowning, what must I do to float? How can I feel your love? What would your love have me know now? Those are the questions that songs are written about because those are the questions that move us out of this. And what is the benefit of all this? As we learn to recognize the deep end of the pool, and our inner dialogue where we tell ourselves lies and think they're true, when we learn that that is not the truth, but the truth is in the water that supports us, the truth is in the loving friends who are getting out of the water themselves that say, come on over this way. Here, it's, it's not so high over there. Here's the side to hold on to. Come on, let's do this together. That's what we're here for. This community and all communities are here to learn together how to get out of the deep end of the pool. So let's do that together. 
Let's drop the little stories, the speeches we tell about each other. Let's drop the little speeches that we say, well, if I ruled the world, I'd do it like this. I know because I have one of those little speeches, so I know I'm not alone. Uh, maybe none of you do. Good for you. <laughs> but let's drop it, and let's instead go to the higher ground of all the beautiful territory around the pool. That is what we are free to experience. Speech is a choice. It's a choice. We get to choose what is the story. So I'm so grateful to have been with you. And um, very quickly, a moment of prayer to take into your heart this area that you have found in your inner speech that causes you to wail and flail. You take that area right now and you put it in your hand and you put it in your heart and you say this to yourself. I am fine. I'm not drowning. I am supported. I am lifted up. There is a power and a presence that's moving through me. I'm learning to trust it. I will continue learning. I will be okay. God is here. All is well. I give thanks for it. I know it's for my good. I know that this whole service is for the good of each and every one of us today, that it touches each of us at some place that lifts us into some level of awareness that we are ready for. Otherwise, we would not be sitting here, and I would not be speaking these words because it is time. I am ready. We are ready. This time is now. And so I give thanks for that movement in consciousness that happened today because we're willing to be available to God. So I let it be magnificent because it is. I don't doubt it. I trust it. I let it be so. And so it is. Amen.